Hi London Reelers, welcome to Oxford. Uh, I thought I'd pick a pretty Oxfordy scene to begin with. Um, this isn't precisely where I study, so don't indict that college for anything that I'm about to say, but let's put some more neutral background behind me. Um, so my name's John, and I'm a proud member of the London Real Academy, and at the first meetup uh, that we had uh, in London at the studios, um, I asked Brian if uh, he would be interested in me sharing my ayahuasca journey uh, with London Real. Um, he immediately said, yes, but I want you to produce things punctually and I want uh, a, a vlog, or vlog, however you pronounce this, every, every four weeks. So immediately I need to produce something and uh, I think that's great. It will give me opportunity to reflect on it and it's in large part that I even encountered and first heard about what ayahuasca is because of London Real and uh, the journeys uh, that they and other guests have been on. Um, so it feels right that I should um, share that in return and I want to document it for myself but I think I also uh, I just want to be able to share this with the, the London Real community um, because it feels like a very personal journey and at the same time something that's not just not just about me and maybe some of you are thinking about the possibility uh, of going and drinking ayahuasca and finding something out um, so I'm going to be completely honest with you as to why I'm going what I think about it and then what happens um, I think one of the key things about the London Real Academy is being vulnerable um, and I don't really have a problem with that uh, so I guess well maybe we'll find if there's some sticking points uh, when I try and answer some of the questions that uh, that I've been sent so I'll I'll not keep this going too long so I'll, I'll go through a few a few of the questions that I've been given and uh, I'll, I'll cut it off at a certain point uh, because there'll be a few more occasions before I head off uh, in early September uh, to Peru so I guess first of all uh, maybe I should say something about who who I am so I am a historian, which always feels a bit weird to say because um, I'm not maybe what the usual picture of a historian is. Uh, maybe I will look that way in 30 years time. Um, but I am a historian. I love studying history. I love uh, teaching it and sharing my enthusiasm for it and understanding why people are the way they are, how they act, what, what goes on with that. Um, and yet, despite feeling from uh, the time that I was doing my master's degree, which frankly I did because I didn't have any better ideas at the time, I realized I, I really love this, but is this everything? Um, and I felt a sort of purposelessness in, uh, in my life. I mean, not all the time, but very often. I remember when I was thinking about how to, how to answer it, basic question what's my motivation I remembered reading a book by a former bishop uh, maybe Archbishop of Edinburgh Richard Holloway um, when I guess maybe I maybe I was 21 um, called looking into the distance and that was a book from something of a Christian standpoint and I'm not I'm not a religious person at all but it was a more open-minded piece it wasn't doctrinaire and it was about searching for meaning in a universe where you know very often in I know, the society that we live in it feels like there's often a place uh, there's a gap uh, where those sorts of elements might be and I felt myself searching and wishing but I couldn't sign up to the sort of principles that he was espousing I don't I don't have any interest in being part of a Christian faith or any other kind of organized religion and I remember also being touched by the kind of things that um, Philip Pullman put across in uh, his uh, best-selling trilogy his dark materials where ultimately the the punchline look away now is there is no meaning in life except the meaning that we make for ourselves and I think that's true but I've got to say I'm not super confident that I'm gonna make a good enough meaning to satisfy myself or any outside uh, perceivers and so this sense of I, I don't know what I should be doing with my life but I know that I don't feel fulfilled with what I'm doing now and so that leads me to want to search. I don't think that going and drinking ayahuasca is going to give me some sense of what the meaning of life is um, by any means, but I'm hoping that it might give me a sense of what's more important to me 
uh, what, what is important to me, what's truly important, rather than the things that maybe in the everyday world I think are important. Um, so I, uh, for as, as long as I can remember, have suffered with um, depression. And that was something which uh, I started taking medication for uh, in my early 20s, 29 now. And that's been a defining characteristic of my life. I know that there's, there's these dark places, there's these, uh, there's these feelings that kind of overwhelm and color everything that I do. That doesn't mean that I feel that way all the time, but there's kind of a the baseline uh, is maybe lower than it is for most other people. Now, I, um, about uh, just under a year ago, I had an incredibly painful breakup. It was the most intense uh, relationship that I've ever had. And uh, I won't go into the details of that because I don't think it would be right or respectful uh, for, for me to do so. But it's left me in a, in a, in a hole, in a really perhaps the lowest I've ever been. And it was around that time, actually, that a good friend of mine introduced me to podcasting, which was something I didn't really even have much of a conception of. And London Real was one of those podcasts. And it was through listening to uh, the people, the interesting people leaving interesting lives, doing things that I hadn't thought about, but which I found myself really entranced by, fascinated by. It started opening the world up to me again. It started giving me a sense that despite the feeling that I was closed in, all my options were, were over, there was no joy, there was no light in this world. In fact, there was a lot of light in this world. Lots of people are doing lots of things and you can just start limiting your horizons because you, you forget about all those other things. And it was through that and the talk about, I guess, the episodes about ayahuasca which start, started speaking to me in particular. Now, to take ayahuasca, you can't be taking SSRIs. Um, that is antidepressants. So I use this uh, point in conjunction with counseling I've been having for the past year, um, in conjunction with challenging myself to do things, to do things that otherwise I wouldn't have done. That means a committed fitness and diet routine. I've started exploring things that I'm interested in. I started a podcast with the same friend who introduced me to London Real. I joined the London Real Academy and I'm loving taking up all those challenges. I also decided, okay, what do I need to do? I need to come off these antidepressants because I think, I really believe rather that uh, I need to go and drink ayahuasca. So um, I'm now clear. Um, it was a stepped process. I spoke to my GP about it. Um, so it was you know, all done very carefully and for the first time in eight years I'm on no medication at all and that's that feels pretty liberating it's um I wondered my arm's getting tired how does Brian Rose do this for so long um I wondered if there would be a big negative effect I wondered if you know I'd feel a lot more volatile but largely touch wood that's that's not been the case so already I think that that's very tied in with the process that I want to change how I feel about myself uh, and I think that the only way to do that is to be able to open up new perspectives on who I am and how I treat myself so I was asked I've been asked by various people you know what's the motivation well the motivation for going to drink ayahuasca I want to learn about myself and I want to be I want to be challenged I know that this isn't going to be fun I certainly know it's not going to be like oh we're getting high crazy visions or whatever no way this is going to be really hard, uh, but I really I, I welcome that challenge because I don't particularly think I have very healthy perspectives on myself, um, on my sense of self worth, my purpose, just myself personally, I suppose. And if ayahuasca, as many people say, comes in and sort of gives you a damn good kicking and tells you. Well, if not tells you, shows you a lot of the, um, the arbitrariness, the falseness of those structures of thought uh, that you have, the way you perceive yourselves and other, yourself and others. Well, I don't like the structures I have about how I perceive myself, at least. So having them torn apart and uh, played around with, that, that appeals to me. But that leads to another question, which I, I was asked uh, a couple of times, what's my, what's my biggest fear? My biggest fear 
is having those structures torn apart only for something worse to come or that those structures aren't torn apart and that all the things that all the really awful things that I think about myself are true maybe it's wrong to think about ayahuasca as something which gives you a greater ability to look objectively at yourself by crushing your ego but the possibility that that sense of objectivity, that ego crushing, could be accompanied by a, kind of a confirmation of some kind that I'm a horrible, useless, worthless, conceited, arrogant person, that terrifies me. Um, I guess there's a core of me that really doesn't think that that's going to happen because I think when I, you know, I look more objectively things through talking to other people, the people who are my friends or a counsellor, they certainly don't, <laughs> they don't think about me that way. I think it's only me that thinks about me that way. But that's the major fear, that all the dark thoughts that I have about myself are actually true and that it's all the rest, the positive stuff, which is, which is the falsehood. Um, I think it's important to say what I think uh, about ayahuasca in general. Um, I'm not a I'm not a spiritual person. I suppose I already said so. Not a religious person. But I've got to say, since taking up the London Real Academy meditation challenge, I've been meditating for about two weeks now every day. That at that level of spirituality, or the spirituality of uh, of Taoism, um, of philosophies of life. And if you read a fantastic book by Daniele Bolelli, uh, who does the Drunken Taoist podcast called Create Your Own Religion, he points out that all these religions, really people just make their own cocktail of beliefs out of the uh, pre-written religions, and ultimately religions are just philosophies of life. And I think I'm certainly open to having different philosophies of life and learning about that. Um, but ultimately do I think that by drinking ayahuasca I'm just drinking a chemical? and it's changing the chemistry of my brain. I do think that. I'm not a scientifically minded person though, so I don't really understand and I'm frankly not interested in, uh, uh, I don't think it'll give me more understanding if I'm interested in the chemical processes that are involved. Um, I, I don't believe that there's gonna be little doctor uh, spirits coming in and fixing me. I don't have a sense that this uh, ayahuasca is a jealous spirit and you can only have uh, it with a particular diet and so on because of the jealousy of the, the spirit. I, I also um, I also shouldn't sound so scathing about it, you know, I think I could hear the sarcastic tone in my voice. I certainly am going in with an open mind and I, I'm going to be completely respectful of the people who do believe and practice these things. Um, I guess my scepticism is just this inherited uh, cultural uh, world in which in which I, I've grown up. But I think that it doesn't matter. As many people who I've heard talk about the ayahuasca experiences have said, it doesn't matter whether you believe uh, in the spirits side of it or not. The point is, what is the experience? Uh, what do you take from it? And what does it do for you? I think. Um, Regardless of the chemistry, regardless of whether there's any sort of spiritual force behind it, what it does is going to be really important at a personal level. Um, and I suppose when we have a world which is full of these uh, psychedelic uh, potentials, you know, magic mushrooms, they just grow in the wild, these are, these are just parts of life, these are parts of the world around us. And I think it's kind of, it's strange and probably quite dysfunctional for a society to demonize them so much and treat them as these totally exceptional outside of life experiences. And if we didn't think of them in that way so much, it wouldn't be such a big deal. And maybe it wouldn't be such a big deal that, oh, I'm going to Peru to drink ayahuasca. Um, so integrating this, however it's thought about, back into uh, ordinary life, is, is going to be a very interesting part of the experience, which I'll talk about later. Um, I guess I'll just uh, answer one more question for now, which is, why go to Peru to do this? And I know uh, 
when uh, Brian did his ayahuasca experiences, he, he didn't go, he was in, in London. Um, well, as should be plain by now, it's not because I'm, I'm expecting some more meaningful uh, spiritual experience in the sense of, of spirits or the spirit of the forest or animal spirits being involved. But I think that because this is something that's all about taking me totally out of my comfort zone and pushing me into new experiences and new perceptions, I want that to be uh, reflected in uh, where I am. I want to go somewhere I've never been before. I want to be in a totally unfamiliar context. I want to be away from the world in which my everyday habits and things which contribute to the fact that I'm not ultimately happy in my life, I, I don't want them to be there. I don't want to um, connect the two. If structures are going to be challenged and questioned or broken inside of me, then I want those, uh, I want to be free of the uh, physical or um, habitual elements of life that might start reasserting themselves extremely fast. Um, I am, despite everything that I've said in a sceptical tone, I'm really attracted to the shamanistic aspect of this. I, I'm fascinated by the idea of the ritual, I'm fascinated by the idea of the the practice, the generations of people who've, who've performed these practices, who've handed down this knowledge. Um, there's something deeply attractive about that. I don't know if that's sort of some kind of uh, inbuilt human thing. We have rituals in every aspect of our lives, and maybe this is just a particularly obvious, pronounced uh, part, or uh, I guess manifestation of that. Um, I don't, I don't think I have a clear reason as to why I am super attracted to it, but, but I am. The idea of sitting in a traditional hut in, a, uh, uh, in the Amazon uh, with a shaman chanting and mixing up this brew is really fascinating. It's like, I want to say it's like going on an adventure, but I don't mean in a frivolous way. This isn't off to see the wizard. This isn't off to um, just have a crazy time and then come home for tea. I don't mean that, but it's an adventure in the sense of doing something totally out of the ordinary and different. I also think that in addition to everything I've just said, going to Peru, to this place, it means that even if it was a terrible experience from the ayahuasca, and even if, say, I didn't have, I didn't receive any lessons, insights, revelations, then at the very least I will be in the Amazon. I'll be in an incredible uh, natural environment, uh, somewhere I've never been before. I'll meet a bunch of people who have a similar goal, um, related, I guess, for the most part, will be to do with self-improvement, self-reflection, and those are the kinds of people I want to meet. That was what was really great about the first London Real Academy meeting, was that although we came from so many different backgrounds, and you would have thought from, if you'd seen it all written down on paper, you would think, these people have got nothing in common, they're not going to be able to have interesting conversations, but that was nonsense, because we're all interested, we have a certain set of mind, we want to improve ourselves, we want to learn about other people, we want to learn about what their passions are, we want to share these things, build off each other and uh, push each other to, to improve and just have a kind of a, a positive dynamic that frankly in most of the rest of my life and social circles is, is absent or it's just it's the opposite. Um, but anyway, yeah, so to be in Peru, in the Amazon, that's, that's pretty cool all by itself. Um, I guess I'll slip in just a, one extra question. Will I be sticking with the dieta, the special uh, diet that you're, you're meant to have uh, when drinking ayahuasca? Yes, 100%, not least because Dre uh, explained to me that uh, there's very important reasons for that, that the ayahuasca can uh, do terrible things to you. It could even kill you if you are um, eating and drinking these substances uh, which don't react well with it and uh, you know you could call that ayahuasca's jealous spirit or you could call it just the basic uh, chemistry of what's going on um, yes so for those reasons obviously but also I want to be strict because I think it's part of the, the discipline of preparing for this that this is a, a really significant personal event this is something that I don't want to take lightly in any way so I don't just want to stroll in there I want to feel like I've composed myself readied myself and part of the process of uh, seriously adapting my my eating uh, my diet to this uh, I think will only build and contribute to that um, 
Uh, my only concern then is uh, what am I going to have on the plane? Uh, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Okay, I think that's more than enough for this, uh, this first uh, vlog. I'd be really interested to know if you have any other questions, if you want to know more about me, if you want to know more about, uh, I guess, expectations, ideas, if you want to tell me about your own experiences with ayahuasca or your hopes and fears, if you're maybe going to go and do it soon, please message me on the London Real uh, Academy um, or get in touch some other way. Perhaps Brian will be able to facilitate that through London Real. Um, and I hope that you'll want to come on this journey with me. Um, because I think it's the kind of journey that's worth sharing. And uh, I can't wait to look back on this after I've been through the experience and just see, um, no doubt, how naive or at least unprepared I was, uh, no matter how much thinking or reading that I've done. So, till next time. <laughs>